welcome to the Literaries Podcast. I'm Maren McPhail. And I'm Morgan Manich. And March is Women's History Month, so we're embracing it uh, for the next couple of episodes. Yay. Yes, we love we love to see it. So today we're going to be talking about some of our favorite historical women, historical women that we feel like need more justice, more light shed on their stories. And yeah, just kind of us fangirling over over historical figures as usual. You know we had to do it. We had we, to do it. We have a niche and we, we stick do. to that niche. And we this stick is to the it. niche. Yep, it's the niche. But okay, before we get into that, I have a grievance to air. You know I love a grievance. <laughs> I'm sa- I saved the grievance specifically for She for told today. me that. She was like, this is going to make you so mad. And I was like, yeah, I, she, I am scared. Morgan's going to be reacting live on the pod. Um, I'm not going to say what book or author it is because, like, I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to be. Open mean. that can of worms. I don't want to open that can of worms. Um, but it is a, a historical book and there's characters referencing um something that happened in the past it's it's dual timeline that's all i'll give you (laughs) um the present day characters are talking about this like kind of pocket watch that they found Mm -hmm. um and we're talking this one character was explaining how men would sometimes wear pocket watches on chains Mm -hmm. on their vests in victorian times to appear wealthy etc the author long story short refers to the the trend of of this pocket watch wearing on your vest with the chains she refers to it being started by king albert instead of prince albert they're like king albert started this in victorian times king albert victoria did not Mm-mm. she no i did I'm, not live her life for at, the, for that no no and i, absolutely I was like not. here's the deal writing historical fiction there's so many details that we will never know that we can't always get a hundred percent right they're so mm-hmm. you know it's minutia and some of these things that we research are obscure but referring to him as king albert that I'm is sorry. Like the most I feel like basic. that's basic. That's pretty damn basic. People that don't even love history are are pretty familiar, I would think, with that. If that was trying to make a point about like how little the characters knew, but the thing if is, someone this, said it one time and then someone corrected the char- them, that would be the fine. The character that was that was teaching the character about why this had become a trend referred to him as King Albert. So it's a well educated character. Uh-huh. supposedly referring to him as King Albert. And that just, again, maybe in the grand scheme of life, not a big deal, but I'm like, as a historical author, wh- where, why did no one, no beta readers, editors, notice this? That's like, that's a given. Basic human knowledge. Like, to me, that would be like, if you said, maybe this is a stupid comparison, but if you said, oh, Abraham Lincoln was president in the 1700s. I feel like, yeah, or, or George Washington ruled or ruled. George Washington <laughs> was president at the end of the 1800s. Like just in your mental timeline of history, I feel like that's kind of a given. Yeah, there's there's like the Prince Albert is such a phrase. Like that's like a phrase. Yeah, I hear, like and it it's and that, just there's a been thing. a lot of. Even if you don't read, there's been a lot of media about Queen yeah. Victoria and kind of how their marriage came to be. I just feel like it's a given. But also, not only that, you're a historical writer. You're a historical writer. I feel Where like was... that's like page one of the yeah. of the, of the history book, like especially like... for Victorian times. Yeah, I'm it's just... called Victorian times for a reason. Yeah, and and I'm like Victoria and again... was married to Prince Albert. <sighs> and it was a whole thing that he was never king he for was a never reason. king for a reason because he could not rank the status of like the royal blood it's exactly like, he the heat that was just, it took me three mm-hmm. seconds to explain that took i don't me know three seconds. I don't and i'm know just how. like why did no one fact check that and because it wasn't uh, just the author it was agents and editors and beta readers beta and readers copy editors like arc readers god forbid it's yeah like, 
I did see on Goodreads other people have noticed this. I was like, and okay, I, I, I was going to say, started, if no started, one else did, I started it's like, the like zone. gaslighting myself too. Cause, and I, I like went into my own research and I was like, okay, well, you know, at the time, did people like kind of as a nickname refer to him as that? Cause he was king in all but name. Like, was that kind of a colloquial reference to Albert? Am I missing something? No. I, from what I can gather and if I'm wrong like let us know like hit us up in the comments but I was like I was like I I there's no way that they put this in there and said yes this is accurate so I was questioning myself that makes me sad yeah that's like like I I get mad at like little details in historical fiction that are wrong because I'm so meticulous about my own yeah. fact checking mm -hmm. and like maybe that's elitist of me but like literally I it's like cannot put a book down until I have checked every corner and made sure it's like okay at the very least okay and passable yeah. that yeah. that That's threshold of knowledge big... is so basic that like if I if and even like if I did that and I sent that to you you would immediately oh, be like I'm I would have Morgan been like, you're done excuse you <laughs> what what drugs are you on did you go <laughs> to college me. or did, did are you just lying about your history degree at this point Random side note, if any of us sniffle or cough, the pollen is out in full oh, force. It's so bad, guys. It's bad. I really feel like I'm just like inhaling this stuff. Yeah. And I you am... live in a, a more high pollen area than I do. So that's I feel true. even worse that for you. True. Yeah. But yeah. I'm just that's my grievance. And I don't say it to sound bitter or no, bitchy. I, think, I say I it think, I think from an appreciation and love for the genre yeah and that like there's so many books that get all these exquisite details as accurate as possible and so much time and effort is put, to, put into these historical books that we read but mm -hmm. to see something like that just kind of like it was like okay to what end and it is sad for me because I think the historical fiction genre has become diluted in like recent years mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it makes me it makes me sad that it, you know it's the the excellence that the genre used to have to uphold and like you had to sort of be accurate because like it was a lesson for a lot of people has now mm -hmm. become like a you can put whatever you want in there and it's just artistic it's just, license it's just vibes. which is fine to an extent I'm not saying like you can't bend facts or anything like if there's a reason for it, of course, go ahead. It's your writing. But at the end of the day, like, f there should be, like, a sanctity of facts. And, like, certain things are, like, this is just how it kind of yeah. went. Mm -hmm. And I don't don't like that. You're absolutely right that that made yeah. me irrationally angry. And especially as, like, we're so into, like, royal history oh, and yeah. all the details that, like... Where is Kate Middleton? Where oh, is she? No. Where is she? Yeah. She, and that's I, another thing. Like, we don't... I think at the end of the day, a lot of us and, like, other women, we're not talking about, like, where is she because it's, like, juicy and we want to, like, online bully her. No, yeah. I think we actually We all genuinely, remember like, Diana. We, we remember, all remember Diana. Diana, and who we're going to talk about later in this episode. And we don't want to see Are a concerned. woman get screwed over by the system. Yeah this machine well, and furthermore the children in question now i'm not gonna uh -huh. like pry speculate, yeah. and speculate but like yeah it's 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 a concern and it's not fair yeah it, you know what's what's going on and kind of where's her agency and yeah that's kind of what i'm asking myself speaking of which women in history a We're lot of them to, very maligned yes. a lot of them very cast aside and just yeah. the general maleness of of the history community is so infuriating mm -hmm. to me. Oh, mm. to this day, I mean, it's just I took one woman's history class and it was the most like enlightening class I ever took and like it felt like I was allowed to talk about historical women without you know a, a male perspective bowling over anything I had to say and mm -hmm. I I despise the fact that like most of the information we know about a lot of the women we're about to talk about today is through a male lens because mm -hmm. god forbid a, a woman study 
her own like her own tribe and her own no, you know, sisterhood. No. It's and, and like, just in, in history departments as a whole, women are, are outnumbered. Very much so. And o- over talked, like talked over yeah. in a lot of spaces. And it's not not fair at all. And I it's one of my main problems with being alive is that women's history is so it got very dark very and fast. i know it's it's one of my main <laughs> grievances with like just being generally on this earth uh that's always a trend and it's it, awful and it the fact that like we will not know so many things about women's history and like specifically the one we're about to talk about because it was recorded by men who deemed details not important or changed details as they saw fit it's like it mm-hmm. breaks my heart actually yeah so that's my tangent about that. Do you want to actually get into? Yeah, you the start people? us off. Yeah, uh, it's no secret if you've listened to our Napoleon movie review that I am Josephine Gurley. I love her to death. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of my historical special interests is her life, and holy crap, it's like a woman can go through so much, and everyone can just see her as something that she's not, and it like, and everyone's like, that's fine, and. I'm looking at you, Ridley Scott. Oh, post oh up. no. You're on my this. list. You're on my list. I <laughs> Go check out our Napoleon episode. Where to... I go into depth about how much I hate that man. Yes. And you talk about Josephine in that episode, too, a little bit. Yeah. it's She had a very difficult life. Uh, I think anyone who went through the French Revolution Ugh, went through a difficult life. I can't even imagine. Life, but, but specifically to the descriptions of like what she went through is so brutal and just mind-boggling to someone who lives in the modern era in a relatively Uh safe country Mm -hmm. it's we could never understand that mental anguish and that's only like the beginning portion of her life it goes so so much deeper and being married to a man like napoleon who is you know being married to an egomaniac is probably not good for anyone and no no (laughs) and yet history has sort of come up with this view of her as like this whore temptress Mm -hmm. you know it's just an archetype that i don't think fits her at all and it's only being reinforced by modern depictions i'm really scott and i don't like it i hate it and there's so much of her story that is on offer that people just don't get to experience because they aren't presented it in modern media and it's it sucks. I don't like it. Um, I highly recommend The Rose of Martinique, which is a biography on Josephine, if you're wanting mm-hmm. to delve deeper. And it kind of goes into, you know, her her life, her decisions, and sort of the toxicity of both of her marriages and how that affected her and how her mindset sort of changed as the years went by. Um, I also recommend Sandra Gullen's uh, fictionalized Life of Josephine series. It's that's that's on my list this year. The it's first so one. good. It, it's relatively old. It was like nineties, two thousands. Yeah, so yeah. Some I of the information that. is outdated, but it it does a very good job of getting into her psyche, giving her space to. Yeah, yeah. exactly. She she is allowed to see things through her point of view, and it's 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 very good. It's written in like diary entries, which I love mm-hmm. books with like that kind of like different take on just you know writing a story and it's really good i very much enjoy it she also has a spinoff about napoleon's stepdaughter and josephine's daughter so okay go and read that i i like she's she's one of the people i can't talk about without like getting either angry or sad like yeah (laughs) you know what i'm saying it's like there are some historical figures like some there's some historical figures that i love so dearly that i couldn't even put on this list because like i can't talk about them yeah it's it just it lights a flame in you yeah it's like it's like i can't even it's like brooke obsessed with brooke has like a scale of of celebrities like where it's like i can't even think about this person and it's she calls it a basilisk where it's like i Mm. if i ever looked at this person i would turn to stone i would not be able to i would just be dead and -hmm. like that's how i feel about some historical figures where it's like i can't look at you because i know too much about you and i know Yeah. just what's going on and it makes me sad so that's that's my josephine tangent why don't you why don't, please talk about someone else so i can okay shut up. so <laughs> this is kind of a group of women uh 
even though we say, you know, that we're not fans of the Tudor era. <laughs> we keep saying that and then we keep bringing up the Tudor era. We keep bringing it up. I'm like, maybe it's growing maybe on us. Like maybe we do like it. Maybe we do down. I think I it is. I didn't want to say anything and like betray like our pact that we hate the Tudor era, but I think it's, I think it is slowly. I think, I think we're slowly getting taken to the dark side. I know. Um, But anyway, the next group of women that need to be honored is obviously henry the eighth's wives and female rage female rage i i know that and again i can't get into the nitty-gritty on this as much as i can to other figures mm-hmm. i don't think any of them at any point got the good end of the stick nope. like they all had different interactions with this man and different origins but i feel like they all dealt suffered for it with the same crap whether that was these these awful divorces or being killed or just generally being treated like crap Mm -hmm. none of it was fair or went well Mm -hmm. for for any of them and they never got to have their say and i think that's part of why so many people like six the musical Mm -hmm. i love six is it gives them obviously it gives them a voice that's the Mm -hmm. main gist because this like awful man just look at him has been has been running the narrative yeah who is your favorite out of the six i mean i feel like i do like anne boleyn and mm-hmm. that's such a basic like just technique. on principle you just have to principle. like her i know more about her. it's like an underdog story it's an like, underdog story to. i know more about her mm-hmm. um in the musical i really like katherine howard uh, yeah howard and howard I've, is like a, a more i've become very howard, interested the in the story of, of the, mm-hmm. the six i think yeah. she's she's the most tragic and when you think about like how young these women are it's yeah katherine howard was like 15 i think or some some something possibly small age is young and i'm just like what yeah even katherine parr like she's the survived so like the theoretically survived. she got the best yeah, but, but she, imagine the trauma that she still she had to crap. live with that. Yeah, yeah, and like, and knowing it, it, about of entering into a relationship, mm-hmm. which I use lightly, with mm-hmm. this man, knowing what's happened to mm-hmm. every woman before her, that could yeah. not unwillingly. Have been, yeah, it's like she says in the musical, "If Henry says it's you, it's you. You can't yeah. say no." So like, having the weight of five other souls on top of you Mm-mm, that's intense like, even though they survived and even though some of them died like you are you are sixth in line and what you do is so con- like contingent upon their choices and like building upon their experiences but at the same time you're dealing with such an erratic man that you don't know what what's gonna get you out of this yeah it's just it's sick it's sick i hate i hate history i hate being a woman and i, hate and I it. just i have such like it fills me with dread when i think about like anne boleyn mm-hmm. and knowing you know am i gonna be beheaded today and like having your execution date set and mm-hmm. like just the impending doom and torture I think anne of boleyn, knowing that anne boleyn almost has like a quality to her where it's like she was kind of the first she broke the mold of like the Catholic marriage and everything like yeah. that. So she yeah. had no experience with how this was going to go. No. And to be rewarded with execution. She was basically is just like a, insane. A, a guinea pig that. Yeah. For what he could get away with. Kill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sad Ugh. if true. I hate that for them. And I hate it. It just, it, it's kind of like I think about a lot too, and not to get like super like, philosophical but like when i read these you know historical accounts and even when i'm watching shows like outlander and like seeing how women were treated and the Mm -hmm. mindsets of these men we've come a long way but Mm -hmm. i also really have things, and i'm like and that's when it hits me like we really haven't like in so many ways we have but in so many ways these things are still happening today. Like just and I'm because like, we have f- rights and can wear pants and can have a credit card doesn't mean the mindset the has changed. The mindset has changed. And, and it hasn't. And, and men are still treating women in ways that I'm like, it's scary to see that there's any parallel to yeah. Tudor times to the 1700s. I, mm-hmm. I just don't even understand. Yeah. Huh. 
This is this is gonna be a, a bad episode. We have a lot of tragic figures very, on here. Yeah, we do. But I feel like, you know, they need once again, like they need their space. And yeah. There's so many other women trying to like bring attention to these women. I'm like, yeah, we're only like one show and we're only two people, but like let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. You know? We need to. We need to we have need that to we need to discussion. Like, exactly. And as women, I feel like it's more important that we have that discussion mm-hmm. because yes. we, we need to historically have to not the, been able mm-hmm. to. We need to add to the conversation by, by men. So why don't we as women hold up, you know, our people We're here? Yeah, we're talking about it. Yeah. Well, this one's come, come as no surprise and it's very we've, basic. We've done a whole episode on her that mm-hmm. you can go check out. We did it back in November. Yeah. Marie Antoinette. I mean, obviously, if, if we're talking about slighted women in history, I mean, I feel like that's the one that comes up most. I remember yeah. getting into like arguments with people on Twitter. And I love people that men you were on like, Twitter. Yes. Uh, just being like men being like she was over, you know, overindulgent. And it's, Ugh, she's the reason God. like spouting the French Revolution propaganda like Robespierre Why? jumped out of them to tell me that. And I was like, you are you are foolish. You are wrong. And you need to pick up a history book because that is not what happened at all. That pisses me off so much. Yeah. It's like the fact that it it makes me mad that these men in the French Revolution who conspired to malign this queen that they hated, their rhetoric is still alive in the 21st century. It's like, and it makes you wonder like, are any of these men spewing these comments, are they capable of? critical thinking or forming their own <laughs> opinion which that's a loaded no. statement but it, if no. you think about it back at the time it was and i don't even know if it was a matter of thinking critically i think it was mm-hmm. a matter of what's easiest yeah what's easy what is the easiest we'll, narrative we'll have to go her with. be the scapegoat for for mm-hmm. the problems mm-hmm. she has you know she's clearly living in excess so why don't we blame you know yeah all of france's economy problems on her mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which, to some extent, she was at fault with. We're not saying, like, she is blameless. Like, no. of course, she, there is some blame to be there, taken yeah, in she the fact that she had privilege a in a human. time where a mm-hmm. lot of people did not have anywhere close to what she, what had. she had. But she was a teenager. I mean, Can you imagine? People, people I, I think adults underestimate how stupid teenagers are and how That's underdeveloped their say. prefrontal cortex yeah. is. Yeah. I'm like, imagine that you're a teenager and you become queen of France. What is yeah. that doing to your brain? Yeah. What is that doing? You are, yeah. At such a young age, it's like, I if I became queen right now, I'd have no idea what was going on to, yeah. to a staggering degree. Mm-hmm. It's like people have, I don't understand that people have no grace for this, you know, this teen, she's a teenager. And not only that, she was a teenager who was groomed for marriage and that's it. Not to, oh, you when know. When you look back at the grooming and yeah. what they talked about, about like oh i just awful it makes not my skin fair. crawl it's awful yeah it's it, the the idea that she was used as like this figurehead for like hatred and she just and she had no idea you know she like there was of course everything was everything to her was made out to be like oh this is rumors and gossip it's like no people hated her mm-hmm. and she had no idea the extent of it until she was literally imprisoned by these people and her children as well. The what they did to her children. What they did to the kids. I can't even. It's like I, I can't even think about it. It's and that's like, like a thing I feel like too generally throughout history, not so much mm-hmm. for any one specific woman, is these people using the kids as leverage, using the kids yeah. as a weapon, um, mm-hmm. bringing them into the mix in any way just to stir the damn pot. Yep. Yep. Just to just to elicit a response. It's like. It's sick. It's really sick. It's twisted as hell is what it is. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it makes me upset that anyone can still think about Marie Antoinette and think and like, those. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking to people that don't care about history. Like they can live in their little bubble, whatever. I'm talking about the people that are spouting off just straight lies in the modern era when there's so much available research to be like, this is all propaganda. This is all straight from the printing press in you know, it's there's no there's no justification for that, you know, level of behavior anymore in that level of like, 
I, the people I was fighting with were like, would fa- fight me to the death on this point. Oh. It's like, I, and I guess that like a will not a willingness to like not accept that you're wrong. Like they don't want to admit that they're misinformed about something, which I understand. I think, I think we all have a little bit of ego in us that would prevent mm-hmm. us from saying, you know, I was wrong about this. You're absolutely right. This is how it went down. But it's also like I I feel like they are defending something they have no idea and cannot understand and have a, a refusal to do the work to justify this point at all. Because if you literally cracked open a history book, you would see it's all yeah. propaganda. And I cannot believe Robespierre has won in 2024. Oh, my God. Huh. Well, if you want to read a good series mm-hmm. where Marie Antoinette gets her own voice, mm-hmm. get her, you know, obviously it's kind of like a fictionalized telling of her life, but it's very historically accurate. Pick up Becoming Marie Antoinette by Juliet Gray. It's a it's trilogy. It's on my Kindle. I have it's, yet to read it. I am I love this trilogy. I can't say enough good things about it. It's mm-hmm. told from her point of view, which I adore. Just getting to even, you know, live in that think, think world. about yeah her her head and her thoughts and the complexity of all she was going through. This is not a man writing against a woman, kind of giving her a voice, and it does a especially in that last book, mm-hmm. which covers the, you know, I'd say the last third of her life, a uh, really powerful perspectives. So yeah. go pick that up if you're wanting. This a good may read be like that. really sexist of me, but if I see a man has written a book from a historical woman's point of view, I immediately am like throw it away. I don't want it. Oh, I will no, never touch flag. it. I it's refuse kind of like to read it because I, I know think... even it's just an unconscious bias. Even if this man is like so into the the idea that this woman could take mm-hmm. up space in history, there's that unconscious bias of like, you will never understand what this woman went through. Why I kind are you of even feel the her? same way about that as I do about a male gynecologist. Yes. That is the perfect analogy. That is the it's absolute like, perfect why analogy. Do you want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. And, and like some have very intentions, like, noble, but at the end of the yes. day, you don't understand. You don't understand. Yeah, you could have very pure intentions, but you you will have never lived it. And yeah. you need yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Empathy only takes you so far. And when you are forcing yourself into the head of a woman and sort of living in her skin for a little bit while you write her point of view, you have to you have to understand the breadth of feeling she had. And a man cannot do that. There's like I just do, I just discount it immediately. And that might be my own bias. And like I maybe should get over that, but I probably will never. I think that mm-hmm. just like I like. I wouldn't necessarily write from the point of view of a historical man because I don't think I could I can't write men's POV anyway because I because I am not able to do that but like I don't think I could I think I'm just so feminine in my perspective that like mm-hmm. I think some woman could do it I I'm just not able to do it but like and and it's also like why did these men feel they have the right to do that like you you've had the narrative for how many hundreds of years let this woman be told by a woman yeah like let let us have her please tangent how about over you share, yeah how about <laughs> you share the next one i am curious to see what this you is, have to say about this her. is a really weird side note about me but in i i honestly forget what grade it was we were assigned a history paper you had to pick a you know, biographical figure and write a paper on them. For some reason, I chose Betsy Ross. And now I've internalized a lot of facts about Betsy Ross. I don't care for the American Revolution as like a uh, general rule for me. Uh, and I don't know why I've internal, but like I've worked so hard on that paper. I drew a whole portrait of her. And the sad thing is at the end of the day, the other kids weren't doing their work. So the paper got canceled and I never got to share my Betsy Ross work with the world. Now it's lost to whatever flash drive or thing I saved it to, it's gone forever. And yeah, poor Betsy Ross. I mean, that that's that's the feminine experience in history. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, she made the flag. Good for her. Yeah. Did you get Which to I research think that's it all? Like, like I, I actually, despite knowing about the American Revolution and many other things, I don't know much about her. 
I don't know if she actually made the flag. I remember, like, stuff about, like, her life, but I don't... I didn't. I did my paper so well, and then like I forgot everything because I didn't have to present it. Maybe if I presented it, I would have been a better Betsy Ross defender. Mm-hmm. But I think I think her whole deal was that she was like credited with the flag, but there was like no evidence. Which like let let her have it. Mm-hmm. If she wants to claim it, let her have it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But like, like we need, she was we need an a woman who was- yeah. And I got really into the idea of upholstery for a little bit when I was a kid because I, I was like, that's so cool that you can like pick a fabric and like put it on a couch. So I like would watch like upholstery videos when I was a kid. I was really I was a really strange child. But now I watch like, you know, like ASMR upholstery videos as an adult. Uh-huh. So like, I guess that was formative for me. So thank you to Betsy Ross for that. She just she just inspired a lot of what you what you liked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really really strange period, but like I can see the little portrait I drew of her with her, her with her little revolution cap on and yeah. like holding the flag and like her little like that was the first time I like oh, knew and what like a 17th century dress even was. Even if she didn't like do the main flag, she was mm-hmm. sewing for probably a lot of flags that were actually used um mm-hmm. in the army. Or navy, yeah. Which good for her. Good for her. Like stay employed. Yeah, and like her work getting used, yeah, and shown in some in some way. Yeah, and now that everyone sees the flag, I think a a great many people would connect Betsy Ross to the flag. Oh no, people do immediately. Yeah, good for her. She deserves it. Yeah, true. I'm all for I'm all for taking credit for. And there's so many different men in the American Revolution. It's nice to have a woman's name. It very much is. And like, there. there's like, you know, Eliza Hamilton, stuff mm-hmm. like that, where it's like the the more common ones. I feel like Betsy Ross needs her time to shine. Yeah. She no. doesn't get discussed as much. She doesn't. And we need to change that. Would you like to share our next one? This one I don't know anything about. Okay. You all know I'm a Sofia Coppola you know, addict at this point. It's mm-hmm. it's getting concerning how often I rewatch her movies. I think she's one of the greatest directors of all time. That's neither here nor there. Um, she just did a movie called Priscilla about Priscilla Presley. And I did not know too much about this period before I sort of like got into this. Uh, I watched the Elvis biopic with Austin Butler it was okay. I I like Baz Luhrmann. I can appreciate it, but like a lot of times it is too much for me and like I don't mm-hmm. sort of get some of the whimsy of it. I love like some of, I love The Great Gatsby. I mean, I watch that all the time. It's it's a comfort film at this point, but like sometimes like he's not for me and like I just didn't care for the Elvis biopic that much and I did watch it in part for Priscilla because I think we all have like the iconic image of like, you know, her winged eyeliner and her big hair and like yeah. I you listen to Lana Del Rey, so of course I know about Priscilla Presley. True. But I was I was sort of missing that from the Baz Luhrmann biopic, and then of course Sofia Coppola swoops in to save the day as she always does, and did a biopic specifically about Priscilla. And it, the idea of Priscilla's life is so insane that like an another powerful man plucked a teenager from you know obscurity and like it, just the way. Elvis treated her was so strange. Briefly, and I feel how like, did he? I, I again, I know nothing. How did he like pluck her? Like what? So how, how did they meet? Like what? She, I think she down? was fifteen when they met. She was living on an army base. Her father was in okay. some rank in the military, and Elvis was famously in the military at that time. And he like m- like had a third party like invite her to like his house for a party, mm-hmm. and he would like keep talking to her. And, like, he was, like, I think to, like, 23 or something. Some And, like, you know I love an age gap. That's weird. That's, that's weird. Nope. That's that's illegal. That's lights and sirens sort yeah. of thing. And just, like, the idea that I sort of took from uh, this biopic and from perusing Priscilla's book, which it's based on, is that, like, Elvis took this, like, teenager that he could mold into the perfect wife, mm-hmm. the perfect image that he wanted of a woman, and he succeeded in that for a long time of 
you know, saying like, this is how you're going to do your hair. This is how you're going to dress. This is how you're going to act. This is how you're going to speak to me. Sort of that kind of stuff of like, why did, why do we let men do this to women? And it's like, she's just another in a long line of people that have fallen victim to powerful, famous men. And it's just, it breaks my heart. And she speaks very fondly of her time with Elvis, which Mm -hmm. like, I both appreciate as like someone like, I'm glad she found some joy in that situation. But at the same time, like how much of that is like affected by the fact that your brain wasn't anywhere close to developed when you were Mm -hmm. sort of whisked away into like this world. And it was a very like stunted world. Like the movie does a very good job of sort of depicting how lonely that life Mm -hmm. could be, especially like you are, you know, the wife, the, the secret girlfriend of, the most famous singer in America, maybe the world, you are not allowed to do anything. You're not allowed to step your toe out of line. You're going to walk around Graceland aimlessly with your dog and that's all you can do sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It just, it's, it, it's like a sour taste in your mouth when you realize that like, this is emblematic of what so many women have gone through. And it's, it's just a whole thing. It just opened up a whole can of worms for me. So I really admire her strength to sort of stay in that for so long and her strength to leave it. Uh, She famously divorced Elvis and as she should uh, crazy that that was even allowed to happen in the first place. But it it took a lot of strength for her to pick up and say like, I'm done. You know, I have, I have other things to worry about and not your ego and not, you know, conforming to your view of what I should be as a woman, which is very powerful. It's a wonderful film, beautiful cinematography. You should absolutely go see it. You know, it's on HBO Max now. So if you have that, go ahead and experience Sofia Coppola in all her glory. Uh, it's very similar to Marie Antoinette in that way. I yeah. feel like it's not, you know, it's not the same kind of excess, but like that idea of like materialism and, you know, wealth and that being so Grooming. stifling yeah. in a way. and. Even though it's like you, this woman has it all, she really doesn't. doesn't and there's this empty yeah. hole in her life that nothing can fill. Yeah. Beautiful film. I have been trying to get Marin to watch it. I will watch it at some point. I have a, I'm, I'm coming up with a laundry list. I keep shoving yeah, movies at you like, you long, have to watch this. I do this. have a very long list. Well. It's there. Would you like our to, last Would one. you like to dive into our last one? <laughs> our last which one we briefly mentioned earlier, but is Princess Diana. Huh. My mom's people's princess. And like grew up with Diana because my mom was so so mm-hmm. obsessed. My family she was too. Pregnant with me when Diana died, so I feel like I Maybe probably you're the reincarnated Diana. <laughs> Maybe like, like Trisha the... <laughs> Paytas is the reincarnated queen. Man, I feel like in the womb, I probably was like, "Why is my mom?" losing her mind um but again like a woman that is going against the powers that be also Mm -hmm. groomed Mm -hmm. very similar to priscilla in a way very similar plucked as like a young girl Mm -hmm. to be the wife older they want her to be that's kind of crazy how similar they are when you think about yeah and like charles was like 30 something when they got married she was 19 mm-hmm. i can't yeah. even with that. can't imagine and that pressure of just the press and what she dealt with and mm-hmm. in terms of trying to just like Survive. lead a mentally healthy life yeah and yeah, have it's autonomy like- and feel loved i think that's such a key thing is like there were you know with charles like there was no true reciprocity there was no No. love no he didn't even try no that's that's the thing it's like i understand royals feel they have a certain entitlement of like i can have a mistress and get away with it sort of thing but like even even at a base level he didn't even try with diana and that's something she craved so bad and she didn't get it and it's It's just something that like i feel like never should have happened no and I don't think she wanted it, but it was just, it was too late. Mm-hmm. And she had and no to go one, through with it. No one knew the extent of it, which is so sad. No. That, like, if no. the public had known, I feel like things might have gone differently and there might have been pressure I, I don't know if for the royal w- family to kind of release the grip a little bit or a lot. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, I know 
there's a lot of debate on Meghan Markle and where mm-hmm. she stands. And, you know, maybe some of it. I, I, bottom line, I do think there's some truth um, yeah. to her experiences. I can't speak for all yeah. of them, yeah. but. I don't care for her, but I, I believe what she's saying about I believe the toxicity that, in the royal family. Exactly. And I don't care for the profiting that she's sort of done mm-hmm. on, out of, after this. And it feels very sort of calculated in some ways, but in others, I totally understand wanting to get out of that machine and understanding, you know, there, there are probably some There's, heinous things that we'll never exactly. truly understand. Yeah. And I just, I feel like, like, again, the royal family has changed, but it also hasn't. Yeah. I feel like Diana, even now for like a lot of like Gen Z girls, Diana's like held up as this like symbol for womanhood. She's like she sort is. of our modern, our modern like battle cry in a way of mm-hmm. like, this is how so many women are treated. And she yeah. was treated so badly, so publicly, and no one lifted a finger to stop it. And no, despite, we cannot despite let this happen again. The good that she did mm-hmm. and the empathy the she showed to so many people, that was like not enough. Mm-hmm. And I think no. was what is what damned her in the end. Mm-hmm. I think that's because she part did of- everything perfectly. That's mm-hmm. the thing. She did everything, maybe not to the letter, but she did what was expected of her. And she did, I think, and- what she felt was sincere for her. Yeah, and for her children. Uh huh. Not only was she a great person, but she was a, a wonderful mother, and I think that is almost heartbreaking in itself. Of like, she not only was she you know a perfect royal while she was in the royal family, she finally escaped to be a better person and a better mother. And yeah. even that wasn't enough on top of the no. years she had spent in service to a family that could not care less about her. No. And. You know, was told to and fall in line when she her. was. That's what I always come back yeah. to. Is just how threatened all of them they were, were of, by her. So threatened by her <sighs> and her popularity, and they couldn't it, stand it. They couldn't stand it because, and it's like, if you want, po- then you change. Then you don't blame a person you, that you, you handpicked exactly, for this they're role. Not for excelling. There was no yeah. self awareness. It was, it was strictly. Yeah. And it was an appreciation for like we picked this girl and she's succeeded beyond our expectations and she's catapulted no, the royal no, family so, to a level mm-mm. of popularity that we couldn't have dreamed of that that wasn't good for them that was bad for them and it's like yeah. what, then what do you want they wanted they what they wanted was Control. a meek controlling yeah. yep. you know someone they could control and manipulate mm-hmm. and she was not that and it's like that's what happens when you you ingratiate a fifteen year old into your family when. She's she was a baby when she like met Charles and was starting to like get yeah. into the royal family stuff. She's as, aware of what you know, just mm-hmm. as a Spencer, and I believe didn't her sister date Charles too? Yeah, mm-hmm. weird. Yeah, weird. Crazy whole, whole thing. Mm-hmm. Just like yeah, yeah. It's I'm I'm so pleased to see nowadays the the justice she's receiving in the public eye, and it's really heartwarming to see the reparations that are being done on her behalf, you know, almost too little too late at this point. Yeah. And I wish that could have happened while she was alive. But, you know, her her death is such a tragedy because she never truly got to live the life she deserved to live after no. all she went through. Yeah. And that's heartbreaking. It's really heartbreaking. It is. More than a lot of people, you know, celebrities passing away is very sad. But with her, it's like, she was doing so much good and she was yeah she had been what through would she so have much. done had she lived is the thing mm-hmm. she was just getting the ball rolling on you know being this figurehead yeah. for change and i, and I for... would have loved to have seen her as a grandmother because i think I she know. really would have that's not me Ex- trying yeah. to place her into a grandma role i feel like she genuinely like would have would have mm-hmm. loved doing that herself and filling that role i think she really I, I would agree. have because i think she would say herself out of everything she had done or being a mother was probably her her top top of her list of you know despite all the humanitarian causes she supported and being royal i think being a mother was you know her her crowning achievement yeah and even that she never got to raise her own kids i mean it's just it's that she didn't get to raise her own kids and that charles brought that you know, woman off the streets and into his home <laughs> to raise his children. I will never, as much as the Roe family has tried to shove propaganda in my face to get me to like Camilla, I will never like her and I will never respect her. I think yeah. that's, I think, you know, I respect that she is queen, should not be queen, should not be queen. Sorry. 
She doesn't deserve it. That's a hot it. take. That's a hot take of yeah. the day. Yeah. As, as a woman, I can't imagine. I understand, like, love being being a factor, but I can't imagine doing that to, to someone. And I, ugh, it just, that makes my skin crawl of, like, that whole Camilla situation it's with so Diana. It's so layered. It's so... And that's the thing. It's like yeah. there's so much. And that's the thing. We'll never understand the we'll full never know the of full it. story. Yeah. But we know what we know is from Diana's mouth. And even that's enough to make me say I will never, never respect trials and I will never respect Camilla. So that's our that's, that's our, our that's our that's the last one on our list. That's where we're ending with mm-hmm. Camilla is not getting I still have my respect. Princess Diana Beanie Baby. It's not oh, one of the ones that we, has uh, the special pellets okay. that's worth something. I checked. <laughs> Okay. So well, I, I have that. Which she has a little cape. Uh-huh. Love that. I love her That's very dearly. She was the people's princess, and we love True. her. We love it. Well, that's all the women we wanted to talk about today. And let us know of some of your favorite historical women in mm-hmm. the comments. We'd love to know if you have any good book or movie recommendations that shine a light on on some historical women. We always love to check those out. Mm-hmm. Well. This has been our Feminine Rage rant. For uh, Women's History Month. Get excited for Women's History Month. We have a couple of fun, you know, female-focused episodes coming up. So get ready for that. And we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye.